Hi, I'm Ollie from Andy's Man Club. Hi, I'm Lucas from Andy's Man Club. I'm John Stones from Man City. Um, so today we're going to go through um, and show you some of the questions that we use within an Andy's Man Club session. So to start off with, uh, we're going to go through how's your week been? So my week this week um, has been a bit of a mixed bag, um, a little bit up and a little bit down. Some, some real lows in there to be honest, but some real positives that have come out of the other end of it as well. Why I'm doing the same. You're doing the same, how's your week? I week? like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, no, I've had a good week, positive week. Um, I think there's always challenges with, with whatever you come into, so try and face them, um, get better and, and learn from my negatives and, and turn them into, into positives. Fair play. Awesome, mate. Thank you very much. Um, I think that leads us nicely into uh, our next question, actually, which is how has a failure set you up for future success? Um, so for me, it's probably when I first applied for the job at Andy's Man Club. Um, I didn't get the job initially because I couldn't drive and that was one of the prerequisites for the job. So I spent the next two years in, in my previous job learning more skills that have, that have thoroughly helped me in, in my role with Andy's Man Club and enabled me to become the ultimately the person that I've become. I think for me, going on furlough during, during the lockdown, uh, during the first one, um, and obviously going from a position where you feel as though you were appreciated by, you know, by a company, by a group of people, to obviously feeling quite underappreciated and sort of being left out on a limb. Um, that, you know, spurred me on to want to prove people wrong, really. Um, and, you know, fast forward, we, we sat here today. Um, I mean, a job that I love. And yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long journey. It's been a messed up journey, but we're here, which is the main thing. Um. I'd have to say, I don't think you can get better without setbacks, without tough times. For me, period in my, in my career where I wasn't playing, wasn't playing for England, and it was all you kind of think about, or it's all on your mind, you want it to change, you, want, you don't think it's right. And then I had to look at myself and, and um, kind of go back to the drawing board and see where I could improve um, every aspect and, and kind of focused all my energy on that and, and yeah. I think that setback you know, was what I needed in the end to improve. We've got a couple of more sort of light-hearted, light-touch questions, if you like. Yeah. Um, so the next one is, which song is your biggest guilty pleasure? Um, I think after after the weekend that we've had, um, Aqua, Candyman, um, is, <laughs> is definitely up there. It's a, I didn't realise just how much of a banger it is. I'm going Aqua as well. I'm going. Um, you two have been listening to this. We have, yeah. yeah, Love yeah. That. yeah literally, just a bit of Euro dance on motorway. You know, yeah, has to be nice. done. Spent nearly twelve hours in the car together. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had air before uh, <laughs> before we got in car. I, I, I think I'm going to surprise you with this one. Um, I'm going to go Vogue Madonna. Nice, nice. Yeah, me and my my little girl love the song. She loves it. Don't know why, but yeah. There should be no guilt there. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question is, um, what is a time when you've faced your fear? What was it and how did you uh, face up to it? I think for me, um, going back to when we opened our 50th club, um, I did a charity skydive to celebrate us opening 50 clubs um, and I'm absolutely terrified of heights. So <laughs> sitting on the edge of that plane um, with some, some random guy strapped to my back ready to throw me out of the plane essentially. Um, was absolutely terrifying. It was literally my worst nightmare, but I just kept thinking of the reason I was doing it, um, the, the celebration that we were having over opening uh, opening a landmark club, um, and the amount of people that we'd helped along the way, and that was sort of the the courage that I needed, if you like, to, to get me over the, the edge there. I think for me, I'll go with the footballing one, which were doing the ACL, um, and then getting back to playing. Um, you know, going from being a really poor goalkeeper to um, you know an immobile poor goalkeeper and putting on a bit of weight as well you know to go with it um, and that you know were, were really difficult getting back to playing especially on those Sunday league pitches in Barnsley like it was <laughs> a bit of a challenge to be fair um, but we got there and um, you know I made plenty of howlers along the way so that's uh, that when I was fearful and uh, yeah turned it round to an extent. <laughs> um, 
suppose the fears that, that I've, I've had over my career, um, getting over them, probably big games and, and the unknown that I've not been in. One example was the Euro final and it was a big fear, a lot of pressure, um, but going into it felt, all right, know what's in front of me, know what to, is expected of me, know what to do. But a big fear of kind of um, losing that game and not wanting that outcome. Obviously that happened, but um, I think how we conducted ourselves and how we were as players, what we did for the nation was something to obviously be proud of and overcome that fear and hopefully this summer we can we can you know get over that step. I have to disagree as a Scotland fan. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every nationality boys on. <laughs> Um, so the next question we're going to ask is um, if you could go back and give your 18 year old self one piece of advice what would it be um, for me I think it would just be to trust the process um, believe in yourself um, not everything's gonna go your way but um, ultimately you're gonna get the end result that you want to get out of it so just trust the process um, and take things in your stride a little bit more I think when I think back went to a, I was 18, I was quite, I don't know what to say. Like, I was just going with the flow a bit. I think I, if, if I had to say something, I wish I took more advice and, and looked up to maybe old, older players a lot more in how they, how they were off the pitch, you know, in the gym, in the recoveries, how they lived the lifestyle. But I think that was a, something that probably every 18 year old did. You know, you were just kind of enjoying what you were doing, not not taking uh, things in too much. Probably that helped me in one way, but yeah, if I could go back, I'd probably do things a lot different. Cheers, mate. Um, so the, the final question that we've got is, who is your role model and why? Um, I never really had a role model growing up. You know, my dad left when I was quite young. My mum has been a, a key influence in my life, but. I've always sort of carved my own path, if you like, um, and looking back, I think I've been my own role model um, for a lot of my life, highlighting sort of where I want to be and what sort of person I want to be and, and what direction I want to head in. So, yeah, I think I'll uh, blow my own trumpet on that one a little bit. My granddad, because he's a legend, my plain and simple. Um, I'm going to say my dad as well. Parents were there at every game when I was younger, training sessions. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sean. Thank you. Yeah. No, you're welcome. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, guys. We're going to go for Yorkshiremen, didn't we? Oh, well, yeah. Great, yeah. yeah. three Yorkshire lads. Did you just get a picture of Yeah, yeah. yeah sound, yeah. Oh, guys. Oliver, come in. Come in a little bit. There you go. Nice, nice. Nice.